created, you didn't do it right because you created her in such a way that she messed up. So he immediately is accusing God of being a faulty creator. He doesn't take any of the responsibility upon himself. I just wonder if we think if Adam had changed the narrative and said, God, I messed up. Forgive me. I, you know, I, I, I was standing right behind my wife. I let her take the lead. I didn't even try to step in and protect her because God only told Adam, you shall not eat of this tree. We don't really get the indication that God told Eve that. So Adam had to relate that to, to Eve. Um, and so whatever Adam gave to Eve, what God said, we don't really exactly know if Adam got the whole narrative right, the whole command right. So immediately Adam picks up on being an accuser, just like Satan, whom he he was there listening to him. I, I just want to yeah. know your thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and you know, like there, a lot of what you said, you know, is obviously using that uh, traditional interpretive lens. And I, I would say, though, that that the accuser aspect of it, I, I would almost look at this story again with kind of that that etiological myth narrative, almost like it's it's um, like that is a a um, a new like a, a part of Satan that is now inside of us almost uh that's that's putting it to to uh i don't think it's that inherent but um if we are reading it like the the snake like like our relationship with the snake hasn't had that enmity that god later curses us with then i wonder if we could read this as the 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 parts of hasatan's voice right like when 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 Hasatan, when Satan accuses us, like there is a part of it that hits us really deep. And, and it doesn't, it's not even always that like Satan's lies are particularly convincing or logical or whatever. Sometimes it can be that, but some of it, I think our, our own, our own sense of the world like accords with. And, and I wonder I wonder if like the the curse that God's talking about is like you're going to have that voice inside your head like you're going to have a a weakness to believe what Pasatan says because uh so so in in this understanding where the snake is kind of a, a part of our you know to to put it in traditional rabbinic language like our our animal soul that uh, it's our hurrah thing um if it is like a bodily thing, God's saying like, now, now that's going to be a stumbling block. It's not going to be a harmonious relationship where sometimes it has good things to say. Now it's mostly going to get hung up on, on revenge and selfishness and, and things like that. And so in that sense, it, it would almost like be explaining why that, that voice of, of Hasatan, like we, we don't just hear it when we're in times of, of intense, persecution or spiritual difficulty like it also kind of invades our every day and then so that would be that would be how i would weave that into this interpretation like this reading of that um but yeah that i i i'd like to think about that more too it's a it's a good it's a good question and oh my goodness let's see Sorry, I was putting it in there. I wasn't trying to be distracting. My wife had brought up the comment about Hasatan today in context to Jesus turning to Peter. And as Peter's rebuking him, he says, not you, Lord, no. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. That's the English interpretation of it. He's not literally calling him Satan, at least from this interpretation. And I, I thought it was very, um, very in intriguing to understand it in an Aramaic element, the Lava Satani. And I was curious to know if maybe perhaps, because I, I don't think the Genesis account, not arguing against Rabbi, Form uh, Rabbi Weiss here, I, I don't think the Genesis account refers to the serpent as a Hasatan, does it? It just refers to it as a serpent. No, yeah, that, yeah, that would be that would be Jesus's reading. It, and that's right, where right. like the, the basis of this is is understanding Jesus's teaching there as as being like a a midrashic teaching on Genesis three. Um, you got to get the drush. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, but that's that's where man, I I had not heard that about this Aramaic statement. I'll have to uh I'll have to look into that. That might uh that might be another good tool in the tool belt. That's cool. What I also like about the serpent too is that if you tie the serpent to being the accuser and the reason you would say the reason that Adam and Eve got ejected from the garden, and yet the serpent being raised in the desert when Moshe is told to car to to craft the snake and right. raise it and and bring salvation to the people, and then that's the same prophetic image of Jesus being raised to bring people salvation. It's just it's it's a redemption story yeah. of the serpent. Well, it's a redemption story of the serpent, just like. Uh, Abraham and Lot, when they're parting ways, it's it's a redemption story of Cain and Abel. Like the mm. whole Bible is all about a story that happens and then a redemption that happens afterward, the way it should have happened. Yeah, and and on that snake note too, like the uh, I hear rabbis mention this all the time about how in in Hebrew the word nachash is um, has the same gematria as the word Mashiach. And uh, and again, with like the literal representation of the bronze serpent, uh, honestly, that that's a big part of why I I think the um, the reading the snake as something that is like the the you know we have the part of us that has God's image, and then we have the part of us that wants and wants and wants, and God created both, but there's that tension. I think like if we if we interpret the snake that way, then the connection between the snake and Mashiach makes sense. Like Mashiach is the one who came, who took on that burden, who clothed himself with that, that burden, that tension, that, that pull towards sin. And, and even to jump to that passage where Jesus is talking to Peter, like, even if, uh, if you read it as him referring to Satan in that sense, we could read it as him saying like, stop, you know, like, I don't want to go through with this. Stop trying to stop saying things that are tempting me. Like, stop saying things that are making that voice louder, Peter. Like, I, I can't handle that right now. Um, but yeah, like, like using it to say like the, like Satan is kind of the embodiment of, of the difficulty of trying to, trying to, to live for a God that is spirit and being like, man, it's so hard. And part of why it's so hard is that I can't, like, we can't just live in the desert and and not have to worry about food or clothing or anything and just study Torah all day. Like, no, we're commanded to go to, to confront the, the suffering in the world, um, to, to bring kingdom and to, to usher people into God's presence. And that, um, that requires us tangling with honestly really complex things that that uh on their surface can seem really intimidating and and uh it, it's sometimes hard to uh to I mean that redemption is hard work and uh I don't know. man it, it's so nice though to I'll... to approach that from a, a place of of God encouraging us and and telling us like this um like not just in an abstract, like spiritually speaking, your sins are forgiven, but also like atonement being like, and in your actual life, in your real life, you do not have to be a victim of sin. You can, you can overcome it. You have what it takes. And I'm giving you, I'm giving you the extra, the extra thing you need to actually have meaningful victory over that. What is what is what does uh, Marty say in the Bama podcast about the guy Moshe, the shopkeeper, and he's like, you want to stop sinning? stop sinning it's not that simple right yeah it just you know if i want to stop if i want to stop committing sin i just stop sinning that's it's that simple <laughs> um i like what you said about the evil inclination and like using it 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 harkens back to uh something that kind of goes along the line, same lines of uh uh searching out the fruit of the spirit and working on um you know disciplines like uh being uh, generous and kind and honoring others and so my wife introduced me to this uh uh, uh teaching of musar which is the spiritual path of of, of uh, you know just spiritual traits and it's just mind-blowing there's this guy is named al marinus he runs this uh musar institute and in it he talks about uh the um the the evil inclination i'm sorry i don't know the hebrew word for it it's something hurrah it's um i want to say it's, it's a hurrah but yeah. yeah so right. yeah so he says the yetzer hara is your evil inclination and that you're not necessarily 
born with propensity for evil, but that you have the capacity to be able to do it. And it's not necessarily a sin until you've made up your mind to do that sin. And, yeah. and, and the, Yeshua the word, takes it a bit step further and he goes, wait a minute, just, just, you know, thinking about the sin and, you know, sitting and stewing on it, that that's, that's enough is sinfulness. Uh, but what, and I'll, I, please, I want you to comment, but, uh, Alan Marinus said, he said, you would do well to not try and conquer your Yetzirah Hurrah, because if you try and conquer it and hold it down, it knows all of your weak points, and I can guarantee you it's going to come back with a vengeance. The best thing you can do is use your Yetzirah Hurrah, know in the ways that it has tempted you, and use that against itself, and that's exactly what the rabbis do with the whole idea of setting up fences to keep yourself from sinning. It's not necessarily that these man-made laws are meant, you know, that you break them, that you're a sinner. No, you have these man-made laws to keep you from breaking the spiritual laws and so it's in a way it's kind of like an extra set of cushion to make sure that you don't accidentally you know do do something that would be dishonoring god yeah well and and to comment on it i mean really the the biggest connection is that in genesis 4 god repeats the basically the, the same poem that god uh speaks to chava talking about sin um and its desire being for you and it uses the same words and um and obviously like as paul would say there's nothing here that's like oh let grace abound uh, you know like the sin it, it's rather saying like what when you when you make a mistake when you sin if you start by if you start by not trusting in grace um or believing that grace is fragile or that your relationship with god is fragile then your first thought is like, oh, I'm lost. I'm done for. I'm going to hell. That's it for me. But if you start from a place of trusting in, trusting in your dad, it, he knows your heart that he loves you. And trusting when God says, hey, you can beat this. Then your relationship with sin doesn't have to be, oh my goodness, there's this world ending thing. It can be like, oh, that's something I need to work on. Like that's something, that's something that I need to master but it's not a mastery like like you said it conquest is what sin calls us to do um mm -hmm. the way god Empire. mends thing yeah the way god mends things is through relationship and redemption and and that's where again you know looking at sin and being like you're not as scary as you seem like you know yeah i said something out of anger but you know what that like a lot of that is because i was I was feeling angry and that that's not a sin. What I said was a sin. And the more I look at it and the more I'm I'm willing to face it, the less it becomes like an existential problem. And the more we can we can have that relationship with ourselves and the, the drives that will sometimes push us to sin. Like you said, the the term yets or hurrah, yets or just means like it's like a term for like molding clay. So it's like, ah, oh, there's a slope. There's a slope that makes it easier to do evil than good. That's true. You know, the the field's a little bit slanted. When you're hungry, it's easier to be mean and angry. Like it, it's it's natural. It's natural for two year olds to pitch a fit when they don't get their way. They haven't really thought about other people's feelings yet. You know, we could we could you know hit them over the head with it and be like, how dare you treat people like that? Or we could be understanding and say like, yeah, no, it's they, they got to learn to get out of it. But we're not going to. I was that. two once yeah exactly and and god made us with all our weaknesses and god even came and took on all those weaknesses and said like you know it's not that when jesus was perfect that doesn't mean he didn't stub his toe it didn't mean we, we even see jesus make what we might consider to be imperfections or mistakes he makes assumptions about people that are wrong and then they correct him and he says wow look at what god's doing that's so cool and and oh I, yeah do you do you mean like the uh the the phyrocynesian woman yeah yeah the, mm -hmm. sorry syrophoenician woman Syrophoenician. and she's following along and he's yeah and he's like no yeah. greater faith <laughs> yeah yeah and and there's you know the 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 fact is is like you know grace grace is there grace has always been there and if and if that if we can like i said before if we if we believe that grace is sturdy not just like some thing that we only break in case of emergency if we if we can treat it like we do in any relationship where it's like you know with my best friend i know it's okay if i show up five minutes late to our coffee date i'm not i'm not stressed about it i probably don't even have to apologize for it 
maybe if I'm always showing up late, then I have to apologize. But you know, it's like the the more we can internalize it, the more we can actually look at our lives and the struggles we face and identify like what is what is really serious? What's the heart of the problem? What's what's God trying to change? Because again, it's not it's not about playing sin whack-a-mole. It's not about, you know, rooting the snake out of our lives completely. It's about looking more like God. And Jesus, to go back to the, the detail, the point of all this, Jesus was totally fine saying like, yeah, I'm a snake. Like I'm the snake that's lifted up because for Jesus, there, there is no conflict. Jesus can walk with the serpent and it's, it's not death. That death can be absorbed and overcome. That's what resurrection is. That's what redemption is. And well, and so um, can Paul, and, but that's only because of the power of the Holy Spirit. So, <laughs> and and that's that's it. That's what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is yeah. Jesus saying, like, yeah, I'm I'm still there. I'm still working, and you can still overcome it. And you'll like Jesus makes some pretty big statements, but we'll do bigger things than him. And uh, and that's where going back and seeing that God was already gearing up for that from the very first moments of our relationship and our very first mistakes. And how, like, you know, even if we we suck all the, like, gigantic, you know, even if we make it less of a myth and more of, like, a parable about family and relationship and, and us messing up and our dad helping us make things right with our partner, like, that, that it still brings yeah. us back to the same, the same task, the same human struggle, but with our eyes focused on looking more like God. Like, that is the goal. That is the goal. God's not afraid of sin we we you know through through repentance and through following the way of jesus we don't have to be either and that's beautiful we can lean into that yeah and guys this and is good Marty, we, uh, we are Marty. two and a half hours into it so yeah i was gonna say we're just gonna, I, I got the guys, we need to invite you back right now so <laughs> you are welcome back you are welcome to come back anytime and we would love to have you back so get in contact with me and let me know what your schedule looks like so we can get you on, on our calendar again because we would love to have you come back and and either continue this or <laughs> yeah. or, or have another teaching either one i mean it's there uh go. Th this, this was just incredible and we really appreciate it <laughs> yeah I, I'm, I'm gonna put uh, i'm gonna put chris on the spot here for a second chris mm. um I, I wanted to find out would you uh would you be willing to close us in prayer tonight I hope he's still there with us. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you picked on me. Oh man, this heavy. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, uh, man, thank you for that. That was really good. Uh, I have a lot to chew on. Uh, I'm, I am like a baby in all of this, <laughs> but. Yeah, I would be honored to pray to close us out. Well, I just want to say, hey, Josh, we 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 appreciate uh, you being here with us tonight. We appreciate your teaching, uh, how incredible it was. Um, like I said, we want to uh, we want to uh, invite you back again, um, and, and we can't tell you what a blessing this was for for uh, not just the guys who were live here tonight, but most of our guys can't be with us uh, on Sunday evening. Mm. Uh, they came, they come and watch it uh, as a recording later in the week. So oh, uh, it, there's probably about 70 guys that are going to be uh, throughout this week that are going to be completely blessed by this. Um, and some of them multiple times. I know I will. I'm going to go back and watch the recording again. So thank you for that. Uh, what a blessing it's been. Yeah. And um, um, like I said, you're invited back again. And Chris, uh, if you would, go ahead and close us in prayer. We thank you for that. Yes, sir. Uh, Father, Abba, we just come before you now, and we just give you thanks for the fellowship that we have, that for you bringing us all together, that we can discuss the word, chew on the word, and contemplate it and apply it to our lives, Father. And we thank you that your mercies are new every day because, man, we fall a lot, but we get back up and we keep trying. Father, uh, we thank Josh for coming over here and doing what he did. Uh, we just ask that as we go about this week, that your presence would be with us, that we would have discernment to hear your voice. 
and to apply your teachings to our, our daily lives. That we can be set apart when others see us, they see you. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your goodness in our lives. Where would we be without you, man? In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for that. Guys, I uh, I appreciate all you guys being with us here, with us here tonight. Uh, I thank you for all the questions. And um, don't forget to uh, uh, visit, us, visit us again next month. Uh, this is a once a month meeting. Um, and uh, it, check the schedule. Um, I try to put the schedule out there so everybody can see ahead of time who the our speaker is going to be. Um, so just check, uh, go back to GRIT uh, on band and, and, and you'll see our calendar. And it'll give you, uh, we try to keep it uh, uh, as up to date as possible. But thank you all of you guys for being here with us. We appreciate it. We love you guys. We uh, we hope to see you again. And uh, Josh, um, don't don't wait too long. Let's get you back on the calendar, buddy. This was incredible. Absolutely. Thank this you. was a pleasure. Yeah. It's yeah. Good to be with y'all. Have a good. Yeah. Thank you. Good night, everybody. <laughs>